So the first quadrilateral you're going to be learning about today is the parallelogram. At the top of the page, it defines a parallelogram to be a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides parallel. So the properties are outlined here in a table. So we want to put a check because if the definition of a parallelogram is that they have both pair of opposite sides parallel, it obviously has that property. To note two segments parallel, again, within a figure or picture, we use the arrows. So two for those two sides is those two sides are parallel, and then the one for the other pair of opposite sides. So both pair of opposite sides are parallel. So with parallel segments, you have to think back to the unit with alternate interior angles, alternate exterior, same side interior, and corresponding. We've had some that were congruent and those that were supplementary. Opposite sides congruent. So remember too, if two lines are parallel, so if I highlight these two, that must mean they're equidistant. They're the same distance apart. So if they weren't the same distance apart, you'd have a tilt in the line and then they wouldn't be parallel. So that means this side is congruent to that side because parallel lines are equidistant. And then if you take a look at the other set of parallel lines, because these opposite sides are parallel, they must be the same distance apart, meaning the other pair of opposite sides are congruent. So in a parallelogram, both pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel. The next one says opposite angles are congruent. So our opposite angle is congruent. Look at your warm-up sheet, number one, with that quadrilateral formed by the intersection of two sets of parallel lines. Were your opposite angles congruent? So was one congruent to three and two congruent to four? Yes. So opposite angles are congruent. So that means this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And then this angle is congruent to this angle. The diagonals were already drawn, and that was from my previous class this morning. I forgot to go back and take those off. If you look at that picture, again, and pictures aren't drawn to scale, but those diagonals, they look to be the same length? No. The diagonals of a parallelogram are not congruent, so I don't want to put a check mark there. The diagonals, though, do bisect each other. If you go back to the beginning of the year, a segment bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. So this is a midpoint of this diagonal, so this piece is congruent to that piece. And then for the other diagonal, this segment is congruent to that segment. So the diagonals do bisect each other, but they don't bisect the angles. They just bisect each other. So they divide the diagonal, one diagonal divides the other diagonal in half. The last property, consecutive sides congruent, no, but consecutive angles are supplementary. Remember, any two parallel lines will draw a picture cut by a transversal. So actually, I will draw it. So I'm going to draw this segment down here. Any two parallel lines cut by a transversal, the same side interior were supplementary. So the consecutive angles being this one here and this angle here are supplementary. So now we're going to take all those properties and we're going to apply them to problems involving algebra, but also using those properties to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So go ahead and read number one. But before we actually go over number one, I forgot, um, when you draw the diagonals in any quadrilateral, you end up with some triangles. So within the parallelogram, you draw the diagonal uh, both diagonals, you have four triangles. There are some relationships that exist between all four or just a pair. So within this picture, I want you to take a moment, I'm going to pause, I want you to identify what type of triangles these are. So we have four blank triangles. So are they equilateral? Are they isosceles? Are they scalene? And then also two, we're going to have some congruent triangles. So triangle what is congruent to triangle what? And then there's another pair. So there's two pairs 
of congruent triangles in those pictures. So I numbered them. So take a moment to see if you can identify the type of triangles that they are. And then also, two, what triangles are congruent to each other. So we have four scalene triangles. And let's start with triangle one. Triangle one right here has one dashed line, four dashed lines, and then three. So using side, side, side for congruency, what other triangle has one dash? line, three dash lines, and four dash lines on the sides. Nate? Three. So one is congruent to three, and then two is congruent to four. Okay? Going back to question number one, A, B, C, D, we have a parallelogram. Find length AD in the measure of AB. So if I want to find length AD, AD is the length of a side. What do you know about the sides of a parallelogram? Opposite sides are congruent. So that means AD is congruent to BC. So setting those expressions equal, we have 7x equal to 5x plus 19. Subtract the 5x, we have 2x equal to 19. Divide 19 by 2, and x is equal to... 9.5. I have to substitute because I'm finding the length AD. So AD is 7x. So 7 times 9.5 is well, 9 times 7 is 63. And then half of 7 is 3 and a half. So therefore 7 times 9 and a half is 66.5. Finding the length of angle B, when I go up to my properties, I know that opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. So if I look at the angle measures that are given, I've got this angle here and this angle here. Those are not opposite, but consecutive. But if, even if you didn't remember that property, you know that opposite sides have to be parallel. So if you look at those two sides cut by a transversal from the beginning of the year, these are same side interior. So they must be supplementary. So the expression or equation for that would be 6y plus 5 plus 10y minus 1 is equal to 180 degrees. Yeah. So then 6y, 10y, 16y plus 4 is equal to 180, subtract the 4, 16y equals 176, divide 176 by 16 and y is 11. To find the measure of angle B, angle B is right here, so 6 times 11 plus 5, the measure of angle B is 71 degrees. Number two says in parallelogram ABCD to the right, we have diagonals AC and BD. So you have to look at the property of the diagonals, which is they bisect each other. The diagonals intersect at E. We have the measurement AE given to us as 3x plus 2. And EC is 20. Remember, if the diagonals bisect each other, E is the midpoint, and therefore AE is congruent to CE. So setting them equal to 3x plus 2 equals 20, subtract the 2, 3x equals 18, divide by 3, x is 6. Number 3, uh, given the parallelogram, we're looking at angles BCD and DAB. So once again, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. BCD is right here. DAB is right here. Those are opposite angles. Opposite angles are congruent. So 11x plus 36, their measures would be equal. 4x plus 78, subtract the 4, 7x equals. What's the difference between 78 and 36? 
42 divided by 7, x is equal to 6. Last one before we take a look at some proofs. In number 4, we're going to find the area and perimeter in simplest radical form. We're given um, the two sides of 6 and 10. We know that opposite sides are congruent, so this is also going to be 10 centimeters. And this is going to be 6 centimeters, so it will be very easy to find the perimeter, knowing both, uh, both pair of opposite sides are congruent. So double 10, double 6, 20 plus 12 is 32 centimeters. Area. The area formula for a parallelogram is what? Now, when you talk about length and width, okay, that's referring to two sides that are perpendicular. Uh, so rectangle, square. When I don't have, again, the two sides, two consecutive sides aren't perpendicular, instead of saying length and width, it's base times height. So we know our base is 10. So how do we find the height? It's given to us over here. It's drawn right here, but it's not marked. You want to make what? A triangle, a right triangle would be nice because we can use some of the properties we learned from last unit, Pythagorean theorem. Do we have a 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90? Where it is, we don't have a triangle or it doesn't split the parallelogram into two triangles. Um, so I want you, I'm going to pause the video. I want you with a partner to discuss this for a couple minutes. Remember, you can move the altitude. It doesn't have to be drawn right there. For instance, I can move it over here or move it to the left. So where do I put the altitude so that I have a right triangle in which I could use that relationship to find its length? So go ahead. As I mentioned, you can draw the altitude wherever you'd like. In using the properties of a parallelogram, if this is 60, this is 60 degrees, right? Um, I'm going to draw the altitude. I can draw it here in pink, or if I draw it here, you can draw one of two sides. Um, if that angle is 60 and here's the 90, that means this angle right here is a 30 degree angle, giving us a special right triangle. And if the hypotenuse is 6, Opposite the 30 is half, which would be 3. And then opposite the 60 degree angle would be that shorter leg, radical 3, or 3 radical 3. Okay? So therefore, if I plug in 3 radical 3, 10 times 3 radical 3 is 30 radical 3 square centimeters. Now moving on to the proofs. Remember, when you're proving, okay, in coordinate geometry, so when you have your statement and reason charts, it's using side, 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 angle, side, angle, uh, side, angle, side, uh, angle, angle, side, hypotenuse, leg. Coordinate geometry, we're using a formula to prove. So you go back to your properties. So you go back to that table that's on the front page, but I have here outlined, if you want to prove using coordinate geometry, so right away you should be thinking about formulas. What formula am I going to use? You just need to show one of the following properties to be true. So one way you could do this is you could show both pair of opposite sides are parallel. How would you show that or what formula would you use to show parallel lines or line segments? Slope. So use the slope formula. If you forgot what the slope formula is, you want to write it off to the side. Slope is change of y over change of x. So you could do that way. Okay, That involves calculating the slope of all four sides. The next way you could do would be to show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent. So again, that's looking at all four sides. To show congruency, you need to use the distance formula. If you want to add it to this page notes, it's the square root of your change of x squared plus the change of 
y squared. So it's doing the distance formula on all four sides. Still quite a bit of work. The next one, you could show that only one pair are both <coughs> congruent in parallel. So that would be using slope and distance. I want you to start this method. This is the shortest method. So if I'm asked on a homework to prove a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram, I will use this method. It might state specifically, though, you have to use slope or you have to use distance. But if it doesn't tell you, this is the method that I use. And it's showing the diagonals bisect each other. To do that, again, a segment bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. So therefore, I would use the midpoint formula. If the diagonals share the same midpoint, then they bisect each other. We're done. Now, as you can see on this question, number five, oh, and it's already drawn from earlier, so I just have to label. I forgot to get rid of that. The use, and this is the way it is on your state assessment sometimes, you don't have to graph it. So on your homework tonight, I'll give you a grid. You don't have to graph it. The graph, and I encourage you to do it on a state assessment, allows you to check your measurements. Did you calculate the slope correct? Did you calculate the distance correctly? It gives you an idea. If it says to find, again, I'm going to use midpoint because that's the shortest way, I can actually see the midpoint of my diagonals right in my picture to verify that I have it correctly. But you don't have to. So take a minute to sketch it. Okay, I'm going to label. So D was negative 2, 2. So here's D, 1, 4. F, and since we have a choice here, I'm going to prove that it is a parallelogram using midpoint. You have to state the formula first. Again, the reason why I'm using midpoint is for this method to prove. And it's to show the diagonals bisect each other. If they bisect each other, they have the same midpoint. So I want to find the midpoint of diagonal. You can use your ruler. I'm just going to sketch it. DF and the midpoint of GE. Now based on my picture, it's a little off, but it's close to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So from my picture, I can see that in you guys using a straight edge, it should come out to be exact. I'm looking to get a midpoint of 0, 5. So for diagonal GE, now when I find the midpoint, I actually set it up, so all I have to do is look at the coordinates above. So for G and E, my X values are 1 and negative 1. Now you won't ever see me do 1 plus a negative. I just reverse it and do negative 1 plus 1. So I don't have the two signs or symbols next to each other. And then 4 plus 6. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and 0 over 2 is 0. 4 plus 6 is 10, and 10 over 2 is 5. I got 0, 5, which is what I got graphically. So it's coming out nicely. The other diagonal is DF. So for DF, the midpoint equals... The x values are negative 2 and 2, so when I add those two together and divide by 2, I do get 0, which matches. And then 2 plus, or I'm sorry, 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. Just to remind you as well, if the proof says to show that it is a parallelogram, you can't do all your work and say, therefore, it's not a parallelogram. 
you have to show that it is when they say to show it is and show that it's not when they say to show that it's not. Back in triangle proofs, my suggestion was the format since, then, therefore. You don't have to use it, but I will. And it would be because since the diagonals have the same midpoint, then they bisect each other. I'm restating the property. Therefore, quadrilateral DEFG is a parallelogram. We can abbreviate in our notes. We can abbreviate in our classwork and our homework. Remember, we just can't abbreviate on an assessment. So go ahead and look at number six while some finish up writing. That figure is already drawn. It says using the distance formula. Okay, so go ahead and write out the formula. Remember in the distance formula too in your calculations, you don't have to show me at this point since we've practiced it, you know, 5 minus 2 squared plus 9 minus 6 squared. You can just show me the square root of what number squared plus what number squared. So it is starting to get quicker even though proofs tend to be pretty long. So distance, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Distance formula, the only way to use distance formula in proving a parallelogram is to show that opposite sides are congruent. So I want to find the length of BC and AD. So what I do is I tend to put those that should have the same length, I do those right after the other. And then watch what I do. So AD I find the difference in my head. So 4 minus the 1 would be 3 squared plus 4 minus 2, 2 squared. And then I look and put my fingers on the other two coordinates for BC. So in BC, I also have 5 minus 2, which is 3 squared, and 7 minus 5, which is 2 squared. And then 3 squared, 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 plus 4 is square root of 13. You can also check your math in your triangle. You should be a squared plus b squared over 3 up 2. You know you're good with the radical. So then let's do the other one. So the other one's going to be a, b, and c, d. So a, b, C, D. So A, B is going to be 2 minus 1, 5 minus 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1 squared plus 5 minus 2, 3 squared. 1 plus 9 is radical 10. And then C, D is 4 minus 5, which is negative 1 squared, still positive 1. And 4 minus 7, negative 3 squared, which is still square root of 10. Now, to not do it as thorough of a response at the end, you could shorten it up and say here, um, if AD equals BC, that means AD is congruent to BC. And here, because length AB is equal to length CD, that means side AB is congruent to side CD. So just making some notes as you go along, and since both, going back to the property, both pair of opposite sides are congruent, quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram.
Yeah, the last one at number seven, it says to prove quadrilateral QRST is a parallelogram, and since we haven't used slope, let's use slope. So slope Now, if you're using slope, you have to find the slope of all four sides. Okay? So I'll do some of the calculations up. We can split it up by row if you want. Um, but I'm showing that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. Do you have an idea of what the opposite sides are? If not, you might want to give a sketch. It doesn't have to be exact, but let's label this QRST. So opposite sides would be QR and ST or TS, RS and QT. So let's do the slope of QR and TS. And then we'll look at the other pair of opposite sides, QT, again M for slope, and then RS. Change of y over change of x. So for q are these two points here. Change of y would be 0 minus b, which would be negative b. Change of x, 0 minus a, which would be negative a, but negative over negative turns into a positive. For TS, so these two, we have B minus 0 for change of Y. B minus 0 is B. And then we have A plus C minus that C. So A plus C minus C becomes what? Two C's cancel out. We have A. So I'm going to do a little shorthand again. Um, equal slopes means QR is parallel to TS. And then we just have to finish with QT and RS. QT, so that's this and this. So B minus B, which is zero. And then A plus C minus A would be over C, and 0 divided by anything is 0. RS, uh, we have 0 minus 0 over C minus 0, 0 over C again, which is 0. So once again, we have equal slopes, and that means QT is parallel to RS. So since both pair of opposite sides are parallel, that means quadrilateral QRST is a parallelogram.